Hi, my name is Woody, and this is Wooden Spoon Data, uh, and we've come with Chris again. How are you doing today, Chris? Hey. Yeah, good. <laughs> round three, round two, three round. round. Yep. Some some round. It, well, to be fair, <laughs> Collingwood has has lost three games by round two, which is the best round two. stat. I've ever heard of. So, um, yeah, if we're going to talk about data and stats here, that's that's one of my favourites. Um, yeah, just going over the weekend, mate. I'm a I'm a happy Saints supporter, that's for sure. Um, looking back on last week, we we kind of said Collingwood would we'd have a fair idea on where they'd be by this time this week. What with their uh, match with St Kilda, and yeah, if they didn't live up to it, it was gonna be it was gonna be problems. Um, there was gonna be the media, and the media started. What do you think? How did they do? Uh, I think How it's did gonna it get go? worse? I think it's gonna get worse. I think the media is gonna jump on them, but I, I don't know if they deserve it. I still think, like, obviously out of form. A lot of players didn't play well. Yep. But how bad is St Kilda? I don't think they're bad at all. Like they're they're probably not contenders, but they're they're definitely top eight. Well, look. I reckon, Ish. I think St Kilda's on the on the edge of like maybe not being an eight, but they should realistically be pushing pretty pretty solidly. Um, and like there there was like good improvement there. I mean, last week I mentioned how kind of little effort came out of the midfield, um, particularly like on, only getting clearances from Steele, Crouch, and. Uh, Marshall and and then they decided to drop Crouch. He was pretty underdone with like little little um, kind of training throughout the preseason. Uh, so yeah, I, I think it was it was a bit of a risk there. Windhager stood up, got six center clearances. Um, yeah, really started seeing a, a bit more from Owens in there too. Um, yeah, St Kilda uh, had some some good players. O- obviously, Nazaya's been given some chocolates in the media as well. Um, so kind of, Very yeah, they, yeah, they, they, their kids, <clears throat> our kids, uh, did well and, and really showed something. So yeah, it was good. Um, I suppose in terms of Collingwood though, they're in trouble, like actual trouble. Are they, I don't, I don't know who, like it's good. They're probably going to be four and oh, I won four. Sorry. So yeah, it's going to look I mean, like trouble, but I don't know. They, they, I still think since Sydney and GWS are two of the better sides in it. Like, I mean, yeah, definitely. I mean, if you're going to, yeah. they've probably mm-hmm. played all finals ish contenders, if depending on where you think St Kilda is. Um, so yeah, but, like I'm not be... ready to write Collingwood off yet. I still yeah. think they can bounce back pretty hard. I think if they lose against Brisbane, and then <laughs> Also lose against Hawthorne in in Adelaide for gather round, then I th- I think you pretty much call it season over at that point. But if, if they lose to Hawthorne, they've definitely got worries. That's a whole different that's a whole different matter. Yeah. But I think I think losing to Brisbane in Brisbane's no. I don't know. It's, it's it makes it tough because they're on four, but yeah, like it's I hard mean, to call curtains. That's that's three. That's the three top teams probably played already you know what I mean like yeah yeah I mean if you're considering St Kilda one of the three top teams I definitely agree um, I, mean, I mean next week after <laughs> Brisbane okay know? yeah of course of course um <laughs> no uh look yeah I will see I mean again it, it but it's it's becoming one of those things of like pushing it pushing it out I think like St Kilda was the first real measuring stick and like, yeah, we can kind of say Brisbane. If they were to lose, there's some excuses there. But if it gets to if it gets to Hawthorne and they lose to Hawthorne, I think they're out of excuses at that point. And uh, uh, there's been no no like title defense that's gone zero they, and four, uh, let alone uh, like zero and five. So that's good. Correct me if I'm wrong, but they did lose to Hawthorne last year, didn't they? They did. Uh, they did, yeah. From memory, actually, I double check that. But yeah, it's. I, I'm pretty sure. Let me let me double check that one for you. But yeah, yeah they did. Hawthorne beat them by 32. Yeah. Yep. So. Round 21. I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think it's. Oh, that'd be it'd be a laugh if they were to go zero and five, losing to Hawthorne. It it'd be bad. And like, 
you know, at that point, it's it's. I think you call the season pretty much. Like you start. Has anyone ever gone start. from premiership to wooden spoon? Is that is that a thing? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to look into that one, man. I don't, I don't know. I, <laughs> like I'm not sure. I don't think so. But like maybe. Um, yeah. Look, sure. that that's that's probably my major thought. I I guess like who looked good from Collingwood out of there not so good looking team before we kind of move on. Uh, Brampton's best game for the club for sure. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's better than his two game Brownlow, not Brownlow, uh, premiership medal winning match yeah. last, last year. So. Yep. Kept Harris Andrews goalless. Yep. He did well. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no, I just, I guess, look, he did well. I, I liked um, Josh Dacos. I, I was at the match. I got to I got to see him running around a fair bit, and, and he was the one that really stood up in their midfield. No, nobody else really did. I didn't even realise Tom Mitchell was playing until I looked at the stats at the end of the game. I'm not kidding. Like, I, I didn't Pete, see him Was he starting there. again? I don't Who think so. Um, oh, we can check, but, yeah, I, I don't think so. Because Finn McRae started sub again, I think. Yeah, he did. He came on in the third. I'd have to, yeah, I'd have to double check who it was for. But um, yeah, look, it was a good, good game for a St Kilda fan. Not the best game for a Collingwood fan, and I think there is problems coming uh, if they were to lose next week's game. Going into the Adelaide Cats match, we've got this graphic from Andrew Whelan from Wheeler Ratings again. Definitely go check him out. It's got a lot of great information here. Um, moving on to Adelaide Cats, uh, another game that Adelaide needed to win and, yeah, did not. So what do we take from it? Uh, look, it was definitely a game they needed to win. Like, I don't know if last week's was so much. I don't know if I agree with that. But, like, um, Geelong, I don't know. I, I think, I think are they good enough to turn their season around? Like, they've got a few Adelaide games coming up now, don't they? I think so. With um, with with I think oh, no, a gather around falls on their home round. Yeah, it it might they might get a couple at home in a row from memory, but um, yeah, look, they're gonna need to start turning it on. I mean, at this point, like I think I agree with Kane in the sense of Kane Corns, and and it's bizarre saying that. I'm I feel like I'm saying it more often, but <laughs> um. Yeah, it's it's bizarre in the sense that like I think that they potentially do end in a similar spot to Gold Coast, so they lost to them last week. I think Adelaide potentially ends in a similar spot to Cats as well because I don't think Cats are quite as good as maybe their early fixture will lead us to believe. Um, well, I I personally think that's probably the best they can play. What the Cats? Yeah, like what they did against Adelaide. I feel like that's them yeah. at peak power. And yeah. Like it wasn't bad footy. I think they beat a lot of teams playing that way, but like, can they keep it up being their best? I don't know. Like, I think they've they've got a very short injury stick. They can't they can't get too many. Um, and if they do, then yeah, well, they, they lost three midfielders before the match. Yeah, and still managed to win. I thought that was impressive. And didn't Bruin get injured? Maybe I think so. I'd have to double check. Uh, I could he, be making that up completely, but yeah, I'll, I'll double check. Um, but at, I suppose um, I'm not seeing an injury sign against him. Yeah, it it did say Tenebrune injured. Yeah, okay. Might have might have been a short term sort of injury that he got over. Um, oh, he was out. Injured before he didn't play because he was injured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was one. Of, he was one of the three that come out. Yeah, Duncan and Atkins as well. Yeah. Um, all right, yeah, that makes more sense. But yeah, look at the they did. They did all right. I mean, they had Kenevert, Oz, uh, Oizen, Mullen, and and Brandon Parfit come in. Um, I mean, there's a there's a little bit to kind of say they did, could did, get better. Did Nevert really come in? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think he got subbed in at like the last three minutes or something, wasn't it? Yeah, it was... yeah, I don't think he really played from. Uh, <laughs> now that I think about it, but um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was like the last two minutes or something. Yeah, he got subbed. I think it, it was. It was. I don't know what you would. Late. 
I don't know, just in case. I mean, I think Dangerfield might have got hurt, so maybe he was coming on for Danger at the end. But um, and they did have a lot of laid outs. Like, yeah, so I think weren't, weren't expecting him to play. No, no, not at all. Um, but look, I, I think yeah, Cats have like played to their peak, and they'll play some reasonable teams coming up, which suggests they they probably win a few more matches in a row and and look fairly good, but. I don't think they play any really difficult teams from memory for a while. And I think that kind of leads them to potentially having a fall off in the second half of the year when more injuries come along. And I think that's where them, Gold Coast and Adelaide probably end up on that edge of the eight spot. And these matches are going to be really important for Adelaide. And that they've now lost two of them. So for me, it's... They're, they're putting themselves behind the eight ball to make the finals already. Um, I don't know. Is is there somebody that you think kind of will turn it around for them? They just got Walker back. Well, I, I think Jordan Dawson's had a, like not a slow start, but not a not as not to his level, not to the level yeah. I think he can go to. Yeah, I think but... he's the one to, to to really pull him across the line if they're going to get take that next step. Yeah, there's but a few. in a year that we expect it to be very, very close around the eight mark, is this doing damage? Is this going to be fixable? I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see, mate. Like, it's going to be a little bit off. Um, I, I think it's early days. They can turn it around, but they, they need to start doing it quick. Um, yeah, look, moving on to the next one, North versus Frio. And did you get to watch much of this, mate? I was, I was fairly impressed with North. Yeah, I watched uh, most of it. Yeah, cool. But North started very well. Yeah, it, it was their second uh, half that really let them down. Um, but yeah, the the first was good footy. There, there was an eight goal stretch there, wasn't there? I think that so. really just got them out of the game. Yeah, I think it was just from the second half onwards they they barely scored. Um, let me just double check. They got yeah, they they got yeah. three six from the second half to ten seven. Like, it's just, <laughs> that's where you're going to lose. But it it's it was impressive. The first half was good. And I think that's what we'll see from North a bit this year. Um, you know, impressive halves of matches, impressive quarters. Um, it'll keep them from getting completely blown out. But, um, yeah, I don't see many games that they particularly win either. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe you think different. But, yeah, I, I don't uh, know. I, I, I think they're better. I, I do think there's been improvement. I, I, I don't think they're going to win a lot of games, but I think if you don't rock up respecting them, you're probably going to get maybe maybe beaten. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, think they're, they're getting to that, that sort of range. It's it's probably one of those ones. If you were to, you know, take it lightly, um, rest a couple of days you didn't need to, you could get jumped. Um, they're, they're getting better. Their midfield's stronger. Their forward line... You know, does a bit here and there. It's it's just a very inexperienced backline, though it, it moves the ball out of it pretty quickly with uh, with Sheasel Fisher and and now McKercher. Um So yeah, look, th- there's things to like, um, but yeah, it, it'll be a while before we see the the real fruits of that. Frio did get their second win in a row though, um, and they've got some competition that is potentially more difficult coming up. They've got Adelaide next week, then Carlton, and then Port. Do you think they can keep the form up? Uh, Carlton, who did you say, sorry? So they've got uh, Adelaide, then Carlton, then Port. Um, Adelaide. Adelaide's be, a tough game. Yeah, it will be at home from memory, so they get to they get to play it in, in Western uh, Australia, uh, but... Uh, Tough match. I'd almost, I'd almost back them because they're at home. But if they were in Adelaide, I'd definitely back Adelaide too. Like it's, yeah, it's one Adelaide of those need a win. It's yeah, again, Adelaide comes into this needing another win. Um, if and, if, if and again, it's it's someone that's around the mark, someone around where they should finish. It's someone they need to beat. Exactly. Um, for me, does, does Fife trouble. make it back? Is he? Is he he's not injured. Five? I knew it was just. A, Fife has been rested. Um, like I think they planned his sub. Uh, I heard yeah. early that they were going to sub him. Um, but yeah, it's essentially, I think he's back playing pretty much full game next week. From from what I understand, 
I, I heard there's back issues, but I don't know if it's back issues more than just he's got he's old and he's got a cooked back, you know? Like Yeah. I think they're just managing him from what I know. Yeah. Um but yeah, it could be there could be more to it. Maybe I've missed something there. Um and, and he started like, the year well. He has. He's looked he's looked like he's got some form back. He looks like he's got some leg back. Um he's not necessarily the five of old, but He's no, gonna I be don't helpful. think he's in Brownlow contention, but no, nah, not at all. He's <laughs> he's not. He's probably not going to bring them to like flag mantle, if I'm honest. But um, yeah, he's he looks good. He's he's definitely provides something now. Um, where last year you could maybe argue not. Um, but yeah, look, that that's kind of most of my thoughts on that game. Did did you have anything? What are, what are your thoughts? Uh, I'm just like Luke Jackson, man. I think he did, as I mentioned, you know, he had a very, very good game. And like, what do you do? What do you do with Sam Darcy when he comes back? Can you can you kick out Jackson after something like that? It was very, very impressive. I feel like we've said this a few times. Like, this isn't the first time we've mentioned, you know, how well Jackson stepped up in in the absence of Darcy. It's yeah, it's, it's a big, it's question. a big topic. It's a big topic, man. Like it's. It just kind of we mentioned last week about how bizarre Frio's situation with their rucks is with potentially chasing English while still having Darcy and, and Luke Jackson. It's it was just it was bizarre for a while there. Um, I I just don't know what they plan on doing, uh, but they've got two amazing rucks and they're going to figure it out somehow. They've they've kind of got to. Um, but yeah, look at. I guess we'll wait and see on that one. Who can who can tell? Uh, moving into our media watch, the the kind of keep an eye on the media and the silly things that they say over the week. Um, I had one that probably is a bit closer to your heart in some regards, but Brad Johnson, mate, what a spoil sport! What a sourpuss! He won't put right. ten bucks towards Tasmania <laughs> as a membership. <laughs> He thinks it might impact his beloved Western Bulldogs. I, I couldn't believe it when I, I saw that. I, I did see this, and I thought it was a bit funny. But like, I do sort of see his point. So like, <laughs> as a Tasmanian, like, I feel like we they sort of need the members to be people that will sign up and will support the club when it comes around. Like, it's a bit of a false dawn, if not. So I, I don't mind it. I don't think it was too bad. Like, he is a doggy supporter. He's not going to swap. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> I the thing for me is if you're chucking 10 bucks into, like, a, a membership package, it's not it's not like a real membership. You just want to see them do good, right? So Did you sign up? I haven't, but I haven't been paid yet, so I will. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, get a, it done. I'm a primo member. I forked out the $15. You forked out. I might have to join you, mate. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I but no. in mind up wearing stickers. <laughs> yeah, but, well, I want one of them stickers. That's that's it. Um, but yeah, basically, that that was my my media watch. Brad Johnson, pull your head in. It's 10 bucks, mate. Coming up next, we've got Who's That Footballer? Enjoy. Who's That Footballer? Nick Nitton Yui. So that was Nick Nat Nui taking his armchair and sitting on top of him. Um, yeah, essentially, we're on to game four. We've got Hawks versus Melbourne. Um, Hawks were badly beaten in the first quarter and never really challenged from there. Um, it was, yeah. Pretty bad. I don't know. Do, do you have specific thoughts on it? Yeah, I thought it was pretty bad from Hawthorne, man. Was like Melbourne just completely dominated them everywhere. Like there was a couple yeah. little moments where Hawthorne like held their ground, but they were few and far between. I thought. Yeah, you literally took the words from my mouth. Um, Hawthorne didn't really mount a challenge in that first half at all. Um, kicking two goals three to half time isn't a great result. Admittedly, they kept Melbourne to somewhat of a non like destructive score at only 41 or 65 but yeah it it never really looked good um it, and was that is that them or is that just 
Melbourne not being able to kick a big score. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of both there for sure. Like, I mean, Melbourne did end up winning by nearly 60. So it's there's a level of, you know, clearly they dominated the game. But um, dominated. yeah, I, yeah, I think you could you could maybe in, in that circumstance have expected a little bit more. That being said, yeah, Sicily was beaten badly by Fritch in that last quarter and probably took them to a more more respectable score for Melbourne considering their dominance. I think it was like three goals kicked in a row on him. It was, wasn't was great. It, it's time to start thinking about what they do in their defence for, for Hawthorne. Um, well, it's tough because they've got injuries, man, like so many injuries. Well, that's what do it. they do? I mean, Who do they got? I think it's, yeah, it is why I tend to think they'll either end up last or second last. Really depends on how West Coast does. Um, but, yeah, look, there's worries. Uh, I think they have a forward line that, like, Joel and Watson, Joel and Lewis, sorry, aren't too bad. Then you've got Jonathan and Watson and Bruce and Gunston. Yep. Like, they should be kicking more than 5'8". They should be kicking yeah. more than 5'8". Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even if it were eight five, it's still not particularly a respectable score. No, they, so. they need to be doing more than that. I mean, you can't yeah. blame the forward line by itself. The whole team has there's problems everywhere. But no. yeah, they're oh, leaking yeah. from defence. Their their midfield's not really dominant. They they don't really have a ruck that that gives them first access. So it's it's tough. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what they do. Mel, Melbourne's forward line woes do look less pre- prevalent. Um, but they they copped some big injuries this one with with Lever and May being out. Um, do you think their defence can hold against the better teams? Uh, not without Lever and May, I don't think. Like you can you can bring Tomlinson in; he's a good player, and you got Petty there. You can go back, but like Lever and May, are, they're they're a whole different level. But they're both very very good. Well, it's what they built their championship around, and yeah, I, that and their them their midfield structure and, and dominance. But yeah, I don't I don't know how they do it without them. It'll be interesting the next few weeks to, to see how they hold up. That being said, the the midfield's looking very, very good. And I, I think yeah. Oliver's still in second gear. I think he's still fine in form. He could well be. And um yeah, look at it, I don't think it's all doom and gloom, but considering some of their, their scoring problems, perhaps yeah, they, they, they're going to have a little more troubles than, than before. Um, moving on to the next game, we have your team, uh, the Bombers versus Sydney. And, and look, Essendon held on pretty well. Um, they did better than I expected. Um, but they do need to improve. Where, where do you think is the is the main points to improve on for Essendon? Uh, well, in that game, in the Sydney game, I feel like I'm not sure what the total score was or anything, but like it felt like red time goals in every quarter just like we were we were in the fight we were taking it up to them and then they'd get two or three at the end of every quarter and just that that's the difference in the end that's the that's the 30 points yeah exactly i mean look i i'm trying to pull it up now to have a quick look but yeah it looks like there was what well, in the last few minutes in the first quarter you had three kicked against you one or two kicked against you to um yeah basically br- bring that back to, to Sydney lead and then coming into the half you had one kicked against you, brought it back to Sydney's lead. Um and then yeah, it, it kind of that second half there was just a bit less control. Um early in that fourth quarter you had two kicked or yeah, actually it was just one at the very end of the first and one at one at the end of the third, one at the fourth. But yeah, it it seemed to be just kind of catching you at those moments where you weren't a hundred percent ready, and um, yeah, that's that's why Sydney looked good this year. If if you're not a hundred percent on, they'll they'll catch you. Yeah, and I think that's the biggest difference is like Sydney's field kicking, like the disposal by foot is just it's just insane. They've got so many good users, so many. Errol yeah. Gordon is just insane. Like he's just insane yeah. for his kicking. I reckon he's the best um, kick in the AFL. Yeah, I mean, look, Nazaya. Is, is probably my my pick for it, but yeah, if outside of a St Kilda player, yeah, he, he's probably <laughs> number one, I guess. But yeah, they they're amazing. Um, I I was really impressed with Sydney. They they look really good. There's there's pretty much them and and GWS. I, I don't know who could stop either of them. Round the eight, moment. round eight, the um the derby. It'll be good. It'll be very It'll be good. good. I'm excited um, for it already. Me too. 
But before we wrap up this match, I guess who do you um who did you like the most from from the Bombers? Uh, I was. I know he got subbed out. I think that was more tactical. So I think but, I lost um, you then. What was that? Who who, who uh, did you like? I was talking about Sammy Draper. I thought he started the game really well. Yeah, he, uh, he oh, faded nice. faded pretty badly, but not badly, but got sub tactically. But yeah, yeah, I thought yeah. bit a bit of few more games into him, and he's looking very good, very strong. Yeah, I like him. Uh, what did you think of the Peter Wright suspension? How long do you think he's uh he's out Ooh. for? I I think he's he's kind of looking very minimum three weeks, but I could see it being four or five pretty easily. The the news out of the AFL just recently was um. It's gone straight to tribunal. But with that, it makes you think it's probably going to be four plus. Yeah, yeah, most likely. Uh, well, what can you do? Um, you guys are versing St Kilda next week, and St Kilda might not have King either. That was a, was a pretty soft hit there. And, and I don't think the, if you if you saw it, it, it didn't do much. But, um, yeah, St Kilda might be without King, so it would be both teams missing their, their two-metre uh, forwards. Um, but what did you think of Amadi's goal? I, before we move on, yeah. I loved it. I just yeah. that little back heel. Oh, good stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I thought was, Jordan's was better. James Jordan at the end of the game. I think it was the last goal, second to last goal kicked. It was very nice. I'll have to go back and look at it. I can't quite remember it, but yeah, I'll, I'll go have a look. Um, there's some golden ones this week. Um, but yeah, it'll it'll be hard to hard to pick goals around. Um, moving on to the to the next match, we come to the Dogs versus Suns. Suns come back to earth. Um, their mids looked all right, but there wasn't much much else that looked great. Um, what were your thoughts? Yeah, I thought like exactly what we've been saying in the last couple of weeks. They, they their disposal efficiency fell off a lot when they got challenged. I um, yeah, the midfield just. Like they still competed, they're still very good. I don't think I think the score line favoured the dogs. They blew it out a lot in that first quarter. Yeah, definitely. But um, yeah, I think they just got beat. And yeah, yeah it was a, big, it's big a tough game for them. Their best and the yeah, them they're one of the teams that I think can make the eight, but it would have to go like a bit would have to go right. And and what I've always thought is going to really hold them back this year is going to be their scoring power. Like I just don't, I don't see enough from King every week. Um, there's certainly not enough from their small forwards. Um, and then Lukosius is pinch hitter. It's it's yeah, all. Roses was missing this week for small forwards. He, he was. Make a difference. He's been playing well. He, it, it, yeah, he, he is one of their shining lights in terms of a small forward. But I I just I think they're missing a couple of. Um, people to kind of get them over the line in that regard and yeah they're they're just a year or two well, away for me i think wits is a big loss though i think wits coming back in that, that could be like the problem with the midfield that could be i liked moyle i think he he did all right considering he played against english and and whatnot but it, yeah wits wits is a loss but their midfield did all right it was their forward line didn't really score enough goals and their back line didn't really hold up to to the to the like the consistent entries despite despite the midfield doing enough majority of the time if if you lose if you lose your forward 50 entry and it goes out and becomes a rebound 50 for for your opposition it, it's just too much so they 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 lost on essentially just not having a forward line and then not being able to def, defend the turnover um so yeah, I I like the Suns, but they they need more from from their forwards before they can really go anywhere um, for me at least. But I, I, the Dogs found some form, which is what we wanted. Their forward line clicked. Um, they make the they made things look good. Darcy looked much better than Lob, um, and, and what I think all of us have been suggesting has happened for quite some time. Um, and then, yeah, we, we even saw Norton playing much higher up the ground to kind of facilitate that role a bit better. He wasn't playing defence, but he, he was linking up much higher. So, yeah, I, I, I liked it. Um, it. It looked better. Waitman 
got off, but I think under under general circumstances of, of a two or so goal game, that that's still a, a really good game for for them and and made their forward line look competent. Yeah, I completely agree with Sam Darcy. I think his his game was pretty huge considering he he looked imposing. Yeah, he's he's um he's one I'm going to keep an eye on for Super Coach if he pulls another. Good game. He's he's coming in for me. But what surprised me is he did it all with um seventy four percent time on ground, fifteen disposals, two goals, yeah. twelve hitouts from memory. Yeah. Um, yeah, he he did he did exactly what you want your second ruck forward to do. Um, which Lob doesn't do every game, and yeah, and worry for Lob. Well, Darcy doesn't do it every. He won't do it every game either. But he's at least the young kid that can just keep developing. Whereas you know what Lob is, you know where his ceiling is. It's yeah, it's not great. Um, yeah. Otherwise, I think we should talk about. Unless you've got something to to add, look. Is there is there any final thoughts from your end? I will just say I, I had a lot of fun watching the uh, the Libba and Rao at match up. I thought it was quite enjoyable. Too hard, yeah, actually. That was great. That that like slam tackle where they started talking about Raoul's name sounding like a growl. That was <laughs> that was that was pretty good. It got me. Um, but yeah, look, moving on from from the Dog Suns game, uh, we'll go on to the Sharon shenanigan. Oh, look at this! Great shot of something not so good. Bang! So, yeah, Sharon Shenanigan of the week, um, the streaker at the Adelaide Cats match. You sent me the the um, message when I was down the street grabbing some drinks. I was like, what have I missed? I get home. <laughs> Mate, that was classic. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Ben Keyes. Ben, Ke- ben Keyes, yeah. Floored him. <laughs> Did you see you got a $10,000 fine? <laughs> I, I just found out about it before. I'm um, just crazy. Did, did, did Matt Crouch think, get anything? I don't think so. No. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's it's a funny one. I think Matt Crouch just held on to him where keys tripped him or something. But um, yeah. the, did you see after it? My favorite part of it was Jeremy Cameron. Um, once Holding the, the ball. yeah <laughs> yeah once the Seki's got him <laughs> holding the ball. That was great. Um, so yeah, definitely sharing shenanigan of the week. I, nothing can pass it. There was a few scones that I thought, you know, Marshall got hit in in the Saints game. I thought he might get it, but nothing gets past a streaker. Let's be real. Um, moving on to the unsung hero. The hell with being an unsung hero. I want to be sung. I've got one that I I think did pretty well for Freo and has been doing pretty well most of the year. He's starting to starting to get a little bit of recognition, but yeah, J- Jordan Clark. Um, just he's taken over that halfback role where, um, yeah, where they've kind of had a, a few people rotate. Um, yeah, I like him. He's done really well. He's got them over the line the last two games, and and let's let's hope he keeps playing well. Yeah, I was I Jordan Clark here yeah, played a good game, played very well. Freeman was looking good. Yeah, they are. Did My- did you have somebody else? Yeah, well, I, I looked at Ed Richards' game for the Doggies this week. I thought he, he played very, very well. Had a team high, nine intercepts off the back line. Just uh, yeah, good. developing. He's becoming a very handy player. Not a star, but just a very good role player. It definitely, and he, he doesn't do too much, like, run off half back. He, he, he locks down just as well as he, he kind of distributes. So, um, yeah, Good, good player, and, and doesn't get a ton of love. So yeah, good, good pick there for sure. Um, yeah, I guess we move on to to game number seven, uh, Richmond versus Port. Um, I yeah, I don't know. I liked I liked Richmond. They look better. Um, then they're, they're definitely. I don't think you're going to be right in their in them coming last this year, mate. Mm-hmm. Um, they they they've got enough there to to stay off the bottom and and stick away from Hawthorne and, and uh, West Coast, but yeah, no, they they looked all right. Um, there's they they need to improve though. Um, their their uh, stalwarts look good. Uh, I did say spoon contenders. I didn't say they'd, they'd take it out, but <laughs> I think they'd be around the mark still. I, I didn't actually watch the game. I missed this one. Okay. 
Yeah, look, for me, there was a few standouts um, for for them. I've I've liked um, Campbell in in their forward line. He's he's got stuff to improve on. There's a few just errant shots there, but he definitely kept them the ball moving and and looked good. Um, so yeah, there, there's a few players that I like for them, um, but there's a few older ones that I'm starting to wonder. You know. Who's going to replace them? Caden McIntosh, those sort of guys. Um, they're, they're good. They hold down their role, and they will hold down their role for a while, but you got to start thinking about who's going to be next um, and and where they're going to go from there at this point. Um, so, and, yeah. And who is next for them? Where do, where do they uh, What do they need to do? That's, I think, realistically, it, it is go hard at the draft. Um, I think... I think they they screwed up a little bit in going for Taranto and Hopper. Um, while they'll hold them down a bit, they they lost a lot of youngsters out of that. So Hopper's still pretty young. Hopper is young, um, and I think we'll see him grow and hold down the fort for them for quite some time. Um, but yeah, I I think they need to maybe clear deck a little bit. Um, see what money they can get back from some of their older players that aren't going to be around for too much longer, whether that is looking at getting rid of Martin and, and some of their bigger names, you know, it's, it's debatable. Um, yeah. But, but otherwise Port got the job done when they needed to, um, they didn't look particularly convincing um, considering, you know, we, we don't have Richmond in that higher regard in, in this year's sort of rankings. Um, but they got it done. Um, they'll they'll keep their their kind of spot where they need it to be, and and they'll go into next week fairly happy with the result. I think. Um, yeah. Look, other than that, I, I guess we we do move on to West Coast Giants. Um, yeah, it was it's pretty over pretty quick. I mean, let's be real. I I, I thought West Coast fought really hard the first the first twenty minutes, fifteen minutes. Yep. Kept, yeah, kept I, in their toes, but yeah, GWS has class, and the ball will go forward. And like the first goal of Toby Green, it was just like, of course, yeah, how who, who is going to stop this guy? Like, yeah, I mean, look, they uh, they did well in that first quarter. They were only down by by like what 20, 19 points in the in the first first quarter, um, and, and they held it out. Late. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was like, yeah, not not that big, um, and they held out until like the the twentieth minute of the of the second until they they got one, two, three goals against pretty quick, and it and it kind of ballooned out to that bigger margin. But yeah, look, they've they've got some shine for the future. It's just it's going to take some while, like some time before before it comes out. At that, that first. 15 minutes, I thought Harley Reid was very, very impactful. But, um, yeah. Hate definitely. to bang on about the number one pick. He's been getting a lot of attention, but he, he didn't just look like a player. He looked like a, a game breaker. It was quite he impressive. Did. There was one moment I saw him um, where he, he he was trapped. He had nowhere to go, and he handballed that as he was about to get tackled. So that they had to let go of the tackle, and then he tackled the dude that got the ball <laughs> and got a free <laughs> kick. And I was like, that's smart. That was really smart. <laughs> like um so yeah, he's he's got something to him. He's um he's a good he's a good player. But realistically, who can stop like the two big dogs at the top in, in terms of Sydney and GWS? i I feel like until they verse each other, we're gonna have a a pretty much undefeated top two New South Wales teams. I, I don't know if you it, agree, but it's looking that way. It's looking that way. I was looking at uh, GWS's fixture, and there's the next four matches: is Suns, Saints, Blues, and Lions. Like, yeah. you'd expect them As to get home against the Suns and probably yeah. the Saints, but then the Blues probably and Lions the... would be a challenge. Yeah, I mean, look, I I think they get home against probably both teams. I, I yeah, with this any... current form, I'd say so. Like they're just they're yeah, I don't think cool. anybody really holds them back at this point. They they they're not really going to struggle until they versus Sydney, and then it's not really going to be too much more of a struggle this year until they have any sort of major injuries. I don't think um, they're looking really good, and early call has them in in the top two, I reckon. But 
Yeah, that that would be my thoughts. Um, is there any final thoughts on the the West Coast Giants? No, I think that's pretty much everything. Yeah, fair. Look, uh, that would be the games wrap up. We'll get to our rolling all Australian. You're Australian. Be Australian. So going into our rolling all Australian, uh, again, this is something we want to eventually kind of change up a bit. Hey, Chris, with uh, getting kind of the data to do a lot of the heavy lifting. Would would you kind of say that's that's kind of the job we're looking for? Yeah, like this is just this is just us picking out names essentially. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe it's, something it's a bit more stats based. Yeah, it's pretty basic for now. Um, but yeah, we'll go through the the um, the lineup here in the full back line. There's only one major change from last week with Tom Stewart coming in. Connor Iden and Harris Andrews still hold their spot, and their half back line remains unchanged with Will Powell, Sam Taylor, and Connor Blakely. Um, Otherwise, moving to the midfield, there's been a bit of a change there. Um, we've got some of the people we had on the bench last week, which we didn't really go over uh, into the midfield in Tom Green and Zach Butters. Um, taking over from Nick Dacos and Connor Rose, what, what do you think, Chris? Do you, do you reckon we've kind of hit the mark there? Yeah, I think like a lot of midfielders at the start of the season are playing very good football. It's hard to go past what Tom Green's done the last three weeks and Zach Butters is two games has been very well. Isaac Heaney, of course. He's had three, three yep. very, very good games. Definitely. Uh, we have also got uh, we've got Noah Anderson on, on the other side of, of the wing as well. It's it's hard to fit them all in, so so you kinda do just ignore wings or, or and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, on onto the forward line we've got Heaney, as you said. Um Mackay and then Flanders. I think with Mackay and Kerno, realistically, you could have either one in. Um, and we, there's, you know, reason to suggest we should have both in still. Um, but yeah, I mean, clutch gene from the other the last few weeks from from Mackay has his slight nod for me. Um, what and, do you and think? Hogan, Hogan's been playing good football as well. It's an argument you can have with three, but. Yeah, I it's just harder to fit. Ahead. Definitely. Um, 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 look, at this point, yeah, Hogan's hard to say anybody's really ahead of him. He's leading the goal kicking for a reason. Otherwise, we've got Papley and Waitman in at the forward pockets, um, taking over from Ginevan and Roses. Look, I, I think there's, there's fair reason there. Waitman had an amazing match this week, kicking six. Uh, Papley, uh, along with Heaney, has really been helping Sydney just dominate this this opening sort of start of the 24 season. So, yeah, it's it's hard for me to think of anybody else. Is, is there anybody you think we've really missed here, Chris? No, nah, like the small forward line. It's still a very tough spot to pick this early, but I think Waitman's game was definitely the best game by a small forward this year. Yeah. Yeah, for and, sure. Uh, yeah, I, I exactly. very, very good player. I um I sent you that message early in the game when <laughs> Waitman kicked like four in the first quarter, saying he's going to kick ten today. Um, he didn't get to ten, but he he looked dangerous throughout. Um, yeah, look, they they're definitely um kind of the main standouts for me. Um, moving on to the followers of the ball, um, we probably should have actually in, included them um in the center, but yeah, Gorn, Rowell, and Cripps, uh, essentially just people killing it week in, week out. Cripps took a week off, so it's kind of hard to replace him with anybody, um, I suppose. Yeah, he, he's, he just looks good. Um, what we've seen of of of, um, of Rowell as well is, is hard to replace in, in his first two weeks, though he, he was a little down. Um, is there anybody you think we're, we're fading here, Chris? What, what do you reckon? Well, we're not really fading him, but Caleb Sarong probably deserves a spot in the field. He, he's on yeah. our bench, but um, he's had a couple of a couple of very good games. That's it. Yeah, moving to the bench line, we've got two Frio players, Luke Jackson and Caleb Sarong, um, both just dominating. Luke Jackson could well be 
pushing for Gorn's spot if he continues his his output. That was pretty crazy this weekend. Um, on the other two, we've got um, the Warner brother. Is it Chad Warner? Is that right? I get them confused. Yeah, Chad, Chad, of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then and then we've got Petrarca as well. Um, just being his dominant self, getting in, putting them fists up in, in defence and <laughs> um, in the final few minutes. Did you see the celebrations on that? That was funny. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, look, that that's the AA at this point. Moving on to our tips really quickly, I think we've got uh, we've got Brisbane Collingwood. Are we, are we in agreement with that one? I'm going Brisbane. Yeah, like I, I wouldn't be surprised if Collingwood goes up there and brings it all together and knocks them off. But at this point, I think you have to tip Brisbane, home ground advantage. Yeah, yeah that's it. Week off, I feel like, yeah, it's it's just got to be one of those ones where, where you give it to them. Um, yeah, North Carlton. I'm guessing we're both picking Carlton. Is there any difference? Yeah, Carlton, it's Carlton easy. I think, yeah. I think we'll finally see Carlton get a win that's more than a goal. Yeah, well, that's it. Um, look, North might put on a bit of a bit of a show, but I, I don't think they'll hold out for the whole match. Um, moving on to the next one, we've got Frio Adelaide um, being in Fremantle. Uh, are you going Frio too? Yeah, I'm going Frio, but I'm not not at all convinced. I think Adelaide has every chance to go up there and knock them off, but yeah. it depends. Depends who shows up for both sides. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, I think it it. Every week's been one of those games that Adelaide needs to win. And look, if Frio's going to be serious, it's one they need to win too. So, yeah, important match. Um, Moving on, though, well, like Essendon and St Kilda, I'm guessing we're both in ingredients. The, the Bombers will be Yeah, on. St Kilda. Uh, <laughs> 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 nah, uh, look, I, I think we both know which side we're going to go for there. Um, and and if you're still free, we should definitely go for the match on, on Saturday. Yeah. Um, but yeah, otherwise we'll we'll move on to the next game. Uh, who do you think's winning out of out of Port Melbourne? Uh, I've got Melbourne down there, man. I, I just I just feel like I don't know. I'm maybe being a bit silly. I think Port's probably the smart pick, but I feel like first yeah. road trip for Melbourne. They need they need a bit of bonding time. I did wonder why, because look, all honesty, I know you were going to pick, <laughs> and and I wondered why you picked Melbourne because they just lost Lever in May, so. I mean, yeah, and yeah. now you say that, I probably will probably will end up switching <laughs> to Port, but I don't know. I just, I just, yeah, original first thought was Melbourne. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, look, moving on to the next one: Western Bulldogs, West Coast Eagles, the Battle of the Wests. Uh, yeah, Western Not much Bulldogs. Of a battle, pretty, probably. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be over pretty quick, most likely. Um, moving on to the final, uh, well, not the final match, actually. Uh, Richmond versus Swans. I'm going Swans, but I think Richmond might put up more of a show than we expect. I think it might get nasty. <laughs> You're still on the I don't train know. that, that everyone's going to think I'm a Yeah, yeah. look, I. I think you've held you've held some you've held some beliefs, which is you know fairly warranted. Um, moving on to the final match the, properly. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, final final match properly. Um, Hawthorne Cats. I think that's a fairly obvious Cats win. Um, I'd be stunned if you picked otherwise. But yeah, that that's kind of our our weekly wrap up. Um, and at any points you wanted to make before we we say goodbye, mate? Any things that really stood out from the round? No, I think that's pretty much everything. A, a Mate, in an thing. hour's talking of, of footy, we, we'd hope we'd nearly got everything. Okay. Um, look, yeah, that, that's it. Um, if there's anything you think we did miss, definitely leave a comment. Um, if you liked the video, leave a like. They, they help. Uh, comments help. They all help. Um, and, yeah, look, thank you very much for your time. We'll be back the same time next week. So if this is something you want to see then, Give us a subscribe as well. And yeah, I'm Woody. This is Wooden Spoon Data. Uh, thanks for your time tonight, Chris. We'll we'll uh, we'll do this again soon. See you next week. Cheers.